So I've always found it interesting thinking about natural horsemanship and kind of, I feel like it has kind of a negative connotation in dressage. And last weekend I was in Yellowstone. So I'm gonna cut kind of to Yellowstone. Um, and I got thinking about natural horsemanship because I don't really think it's natural to be riding around on horses with saddles and a bit. But there's a reason why it's called natural horsemanship. And I, it got me thinking about that, being in Yellowstone, being around wild animals in a truly natural environment. It, it got me thinking about why do we call it natural horsemanship? And is there anything to learn from that? So let's start in Yellowstone. I'll cut there and then I'll bring you back here and kind of talk about some of my thoughts. So let's go there, check it out. What's up guys? Welcome to Gardner, Montana. Okay, so I'm here. Let's see, is this focused? I think so. I'm here in Gardner, Montana, which is like, there's like Yellowstone National Park, which is the upper left-hand side of uh, Wyoming. And then Gardner is like right above Wyoming in Montana. And I actually, I took a few days off, took a break here. Well, just two days, but still, it's nice to get away. Ooh, it's so beautiful. It's like, holy crap. But anyway, it got me thinking about natural horsemanship. So if you guys, if you guys watch this channel, you probably know that um, I came from a natural horsemanship background and it, it got me thinking about why natural horsemanship is called that. I can't get over how beautiful this is. Man, it's good stuff. Focus, focus, there we go, there we go. Okay, so the trip was amazing and it got me thinking about natural horsemanship and why, why did they call it that? So I, on the plane ride home, I actually did some reading and uh, like kind of dug into where natural horsemanship started. And it's hard to kind of pinpoint because natural horsemanship is really a broad category of different training techniques. But they do have some things in common. And it really started getting steam in the 80s. Um, and kind of what happened was we had, in America at least, we had these wild horses that were raised 
um, out in big open spaces and they'd be brought in as three year olds or four year olds and the cowboys would start these horses. And traditionally this process of starting the horses was really, really rough. Um, and natural horsemanship kind of where that started to come kind of onto the scene was presenting a, a more gentle way of working with the horse's mind to transfer them from this wild state into a state of working with the human. Instead of breaking the horse, we're starting the horse. And um, like being in Yellowstone, just seeing horses totally in a natural environment and they're learning or seeing animals in a natural environment and then thinking of horses and how they have these natural tendencies, tendencies to understand pressure and relief. And, and I think as a horseman, it's really important to try to understand what the horse thinks and why they're reacting a certain way. And if I can get more in tune with them and figure out how can I set things up that they can find the right answer, that's gonna be a better approach. But I also think about it like, when I watch the dressage people that really inspire me, like they're on that same wavelength. They're still working with the mind of the horse more than just physically manipulating them. And so, anyway, it was kind of nice to take a break in Yellowstone and like amazing, it's an amazing place, really amazing place. And um, kind of cool to get to see the, the goats and the buffalo. But anyway, that was kind of my thoughts. It's kind of a different video today, but um, cool things to think about. So, hope you guys liked it. All right, peace guys.